Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So I've already done two different videos ranking all SMGs and assault rifles by their TTK and BF2042 and honestly those videos did great and a lot of you guys asked for more episodes and for other weapon classes. So we're here today with the LMG part. The links to the previous videos are down in the description. You can also go ahead and watch them as well. For you guys who don't know, TTK stands for time to kill. It's a very important factor for any weapon in any shooting game and it depends on fire rate, damage and distance from target. For the LMGs today, my target distance is below 60 meters. I believe LMGs are more comfortable in this range and we can do a little comparison without doing any harm to close or long range LMGs. I will also give you the setup needed to get the maximum TTK from all the weapons so you can go ahead and put them to test yourself. We've got 10 LMGs in 2042, vault weapons included. So let's not waste time and get straight into the fun stuff. At number 9, we've got the Type 88 LMG. If I want to be absolutely honest with you guys, I've always hated this weapon and it goes all the way back to Battlefield 3. Back in the day, it was more powerful, but even in Battlefield 2042 and as a vault weapon, as soon as you start playing with this weapon, you realize there is something wrong with it. The TTK on this weapon is 356 milliseconds, which is really a bad number even compared to other LMGs. I have no idea why, but I always come across people running away from me or even killing me with 2-3 HP remaining when playing the Type 88, and this has never really happened to me that often with any other weapon in the game. Maybe it's a damage model or maybe even something else, but one thing is for sure, and that's the fact that Type 88 really deserves to be called the worst LMG. Make sure to try and change my mind in the comment section, but anyway, let's take a look at the best weapon setup for this weapon to get the target TTK. For muzzle, I like going for the champion muzzle break. For under battle, I would say the foregrip is a good option to remove some of that vertical recoil. Then go for the bipod for some long range shooting as well. Long range is probably the only place where this weapon can shine since the recoil is decent. Then for ammo, use everything you have available because you don't really have a choice. Weapon sight is your personal preference. So here's the setup. At number 8, we've got a Battlefield Classic, the M60. This weapon performs slightly better than the Type 88 with a TTK of 347.6 milliseconds and what I like about this weapon is that the recoil is decent and you can just control it easily and also the stopping power is incredible. It really feels like you're shooting an LMG and the damage model definitely gives this weapon something to say regardless of being the second worst LMG in the game when it comes to TTK. Now for the setup it's pretty much straightforward. You gotta go with the default muzzle then go straight to the LWG grip to get some more accuracy and then a bipod is also great when you want to lay down some suppressive fire. For ammo you don't really have a choice so go ahead and use what you've got, use your favorite weapon sites and you're good to go and here's your setup. At number 7 we've got the RPK-74M which is another vault weapon and it beats the M60 by the smallest of differences really. That's actually 0.6 milliseconds with a TTK of 347 milliseconds. RPK in 2042 is a middle line between assault rifles and light machine guns. It has the defining features of both weapon classes in one package and I think it's a pretty decent weapon. The recoil is pretty much easy to get used to, the damage model is fine, the fire rate is on point and I guess you can call it a solid LMG. And I gotta be honest, I really enjoy playing with this weapon. For the setup however, I'd go with the Arkham Tactical Muzzle Break to avoid the annoying horizontal recoil that this weapon really has by nature. And then for under barrel, the LS1 laser sight can be a good choice if coupled with a bipod because the RPK is a good weapon even in longer ranges. Use all the ammo options available on the weapon and then there goes your RPK. Oh, and you've been watching the channel for quite some time, so this is the proper time to consider subscribing to the channel. There are videos like this coming in the future. Everything about Battlefield franchise and other FPS games that are worthy of your attention will be shared on this channel. So consider doing that so you won't miss out on the future videos. At number 6, we've got the Almighty M2040B. This weapon is hands down the hardest hitting LMG in the game. Big and chunky, probably even slow, but my god, this thing hits. The TTK is 341.16 milliseconds and among the Vault LMGs, it really stands out as the big boy with big rounds. You also need to know that in under 10 meters, this weapon has the fastest TTK among all the LMGs. So it is a very powerful weapon even with the limited attachments. For the setup, I'd go with the default muzzle for the lack of a better attachment really. For under barrel, we've got the LWG grip available, so go ahead and use that alongside the bipod, which is really a must for any light machine gun. For ammo, again, you don't really have a choice, so use what you've got, and here we go, here's the setup. At number 5, we finally got a true Battlefield Classic, the XM8. It came all the way from Bad Company 2 to Battlefield 2042 to become the best vault weapon LMG in terms of TTK. 
That number for the XM8 is 325 milliseconds, which is way faster than any other Volt LMG. Honestly, it really feels great to play this gun. The thing has a high fire rate, the recoil is decent, the long range capabilities are great, and all in all, it's a more powerful version of the RPK being as fast as an assault rifle, but with the LMG firepower. For the setup, leave the muzzle on default, but for underbarrel, LS1 laser sight should give you some more hipfire accuracy for close range gunfights, and a bipod lets you enjoy the full potential in long range. There is also no choice for ammo, so use your favorite scopes and here goes the setup. At number 4, we've got two weapons having the exact same TTK, the DFR Strife and the Avances, which is probably the most popular LMG in the game. They both have a TTK of 312 milliseconds. What's very interesting with ranking LMGs is the fact that not even one Vault LMG could make it to the top 4, which reminds us one more time how big the performance gap between Vault weapons and all-out warfare weapons can be. Anyway, DFR Strife is the latest LMG in the game, and in my opinion, it's still one of the best overall. On the other hand, we've got the advances, and for some reason, I just hate that weapon, but everyone else loves it. For the setup, I'd like to start with the advances. I've always been more comfortable with the champion muzzle break, and honestly, I don't use anything else. For underbarrel, I prefer the LWG grip over the STNR laser sight because I just love the accuracy when I aim down sight. Then I need a bipod and that's taken care of. You can get the best TTK with the standard issue ammo, so go for standard issue extended, then standard issue, and then high power and the setup should be ready to go. For DFR Strife, I like to use the Arkham Tactical Muzzle Break, then for Underbarrel, the LWG grip is OP and pair it with a set of bipods for long range gunfights. For ammo, the best TTK is achieved by standard issue rounds, and solely because of that, I'm gonna go all out standard issue with the belt fed, then extended one, and then just regular standard issue, and so here's the setup. At number 3 we've got the PKP BP. It's a bullpup variant of the infamous Russian PKP and it's made for special forces. What's interesting about this gun in 2042 is that it has a grip and a bipod at the same time, meaning you can go from standing and shooting to going prone and lasering people without switching attachments, which is great for a weapon as powerful as this one. The TTK on this thing is 289 milliseconds, which is considered a huge upgrade even compared to the advances or the VFR. Now for the setup, a champion muzzle break should do the trick. For underbarrel, you don't have a choice, but for ammo, considering we need the best TTK, you should go with the standard issue extended, then high power extended, and then high power. Use whatever scope you like, and here's the final setup. Moving on to number two, we've got the RPT-31. This weapon's recoil, in my opinion, is all over the place, but once you get used to it, you will be unstoppable. The TTK is 286 milliseconds, which is just slightly faster than the PKP, but you've got some more attachments, and overall, I believe it's a better weapon. And it's more of a close range LMG compared to the PKP. KP, so you better keep that in mind. For the setup, you gotta go for the shortened barrel to get the fastest TTK, so we're only using that today. For under barrel, LWG grip is the way to go, coupled with a set of bipods, making things easier and long range and for suppressive fire. For ammo, high power gives you the fastest TTK, so high power extended, then high power, and then standard issue should do the trick, and here's the setup. And lastly, at number one, we've got the LCMG. Not gonna lie, the LCMG has never been my favorite LMG. I don't like the recoil pattern. I don't even like how it looks, but that doesn't change the fact that it's got the fastest TTK for a light machine gun in Battlefield 2042, which is 281.83 milliseconds. To achieve that number, you gotta do two main things. First of all, you need to be using the shortened barrel to maximize that rate of fire and TTK. And second of all, you need to be using the close combat ammo, which is quite strange to use on a light machine gun, but since we're doing this solely for the fastest TTK possible, I don't think it's a big problem. So moving up straight to the setup, shortened barrel, then for under barrel I like having the LWG grip, then the master key for close range encounters, and then a bipod as usual. For ammo, close combat first, then standard issue extended, and then standard issue should do the trick, and finally, here's the setup. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Here is also a table to compare the weapons side by side. You can actually go ahead and pause the video. Maybe you want to take a look back at what we've gone through in today's video. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed and hope it was helpful. I'll probably do a similar video for the DMRs in the upcoming days. So stay tuned for that. And let me know down in the comment sections if you like the video or not. I'm going to try to improve day by day. And that is the goal of the channel. Until next time, guys, stay cool.